hello hello everyone my name is Laura this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video I am super excited because this is a video that I haven't seen other people do but I'm sure that they have I'm not saying that this is a completely original idea but it was really cool when the idea struck me and I decided to go through with it. So this is a video where I will be judging book covers based on their contents. So I am asking my husband to pick out some books that I have already read and I'm going to talk about their covers, whether I think they are pretty, but also whether I think they represent the content and are true to the book itself. <laughs> As you can see he did choose five books I was not I did not know what books he chose until now so these are the five and I'm just gonna go through them one by one and kind of give my thoughts on the covers and the story also before we begin I should let you know that I will most likely be dealing with spoilers in this video for all these books so I will have it timestamped for each book that I'm talking about so if you haven't read a book and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled you can go ahead and skip it and move on to a book that you have read because again if I'm judging the book by the contents I need to talk about all the contents so the first one we have Sheets by Brenna Thumler I thought this was an okay graphic novel I wasn't super excited about it like everybody else was um, I think the cover is really pretty I really love the color scheme of it how light colored it is especially when you think of something ghosts uh, you don't always think light colored but with but because it's such a cutesy story if I think the fact that it's not trying to be all dark and creepy really represents the book best also the fact that he's in a little washer or dryer is super cute it gives it gave me the impression though that this ghost was going to be a a little less mischievous and just a little more adventure -y, kind of adorable like just the fact that he's in a washing machine or a dryer just kind of made me think that he was going to like blend in and kind of get caught or something like that when that's not really what happens I think it's adorable for what it is but it's not the perfect cover I would say Alright, the second book that he chose was Wilder Girls by Rory Powers, and this book I wasn't super thrilled with. I feel like this is a book that people that either people love or people hate. I was kind of in the, uh, I dislike it. It wasn't one that I like hated, but I just didn't like it. In terms of the cover, it's very monotone, like the outfit that she's wearing I like the shirt that she's wearing is almost the same color as the background and that's kind of it's not my favorite thing it's a little weird also just the way that they have her unraveling I think it's a really interesting concept but I think in terms of how the little how the not quite the infection but I don't remember what it was called how they're how it works is not the same. I feel like this is trying to portray a slightly different message. I mean, I I like that they have her one eye covered because she doesn't really have that eye. But other than that, like she didn't have flowers growing from her until she like died, except she didn't die, but like you know what I mean? The cover is portraying false events, but still within the realm of what the book was. But it's the unraveling. I just don't, I don't get it in terms of the book other than they're all unraveling because they're like on an island and they're stuck. But I don't know. It was not my favorite cover. I was not a big fan of this cover. There was a long time I didn't want to read it because of the cover. The third book is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin and I loved this book and I love its color. I love the storm in the background. It's very representative of both what's going on the turmoil in the main character but also the storm that the characters are facing in real life and trying to 
kind of calm the weather down. I love, it very much gives witchy vibes and it very much gives like strong seasonal vibes just with the uh, coloration and the leaves going around a main character. She's on a road with these fields, but that's not in focus, that's not the main point. Uh, which I think is a really good testament to this book because this book is all about the character. I don't say it's super plot driven, like there is a plot but it almost seems to be ignored for most of the book and we're really just focusing on the character so I love how the camera of the cover of this book is just focusing on the character. I thought that was a really cool aspect to it. The character herself, I like how she is positioned, uh, just that she's in the middle of a storm but she's kind of calm or trying to get things under control like with her eyes closed looking up letting her hair be windswept above i thought that was a good representation of how the character is throughout the book how there's all this turmoil but at the same time i don't quite get why she's calm but like i also kind of do just because there's a lot going on that she's trying to figure out and so i think this book is a really good representation and it really helps to start set the atmosphere and the vibes of this book, which was my favorite thing about it. The fourth book was Lyriel, and this is by Garth Nix. This is the second book in the Aporson trilogy, and the Aporson trilogy deals with necromancy, and if you haven't read it, I would highly suggest it. So many people in my family love it. It's such a good book. One thing I will say about this book right away is that I love the dynamic of the blue, how it's not just one shade of blue but it goes dark and light and it really I love the contrast of the white down here and the white up here and the whole mountains and journaling and how we have our character and the cat uh, on the cover of the book I think that's a fun little detail of the story but without um, making it one of those cheesy YA covers I like that it was its own unique thing Obviously, I love the symbol here because it actually gives a visual of what the book, of the symbols used in the book so you kind of know what they're looking at and it's really beautiful. I think that's kind of hard to catch on camera are all the little symbols around the entire cover of the book and I love how subtle it is but that it's there. And this is, and I also, in terms of it being a series, I love how the continuity is between the books because the first book is like this but with orange and the last book is like this but with red and so I really admire the continuity there. The font is an interesting choice. I love the font because it really does give those like old fantasy like magical vibes you know. It's just such a unique font that I don't see used on a lot of books and it totally works and so I really admire that. And then also with how the author's name is on here, it looks like one of those stamps that you would see. And again, it's such a unique thing and it doesn't take away from the book at all. I Maybe if it weren't for these little symbols, I would say the book cover is a little plain, but because there is that subtle detail, I don't think it is too plain, but it is quite dark. And like there's so much detail down here and I really appreciate that. The last book that he chose for me to look at is Lovely War by Julie Berry. And this is obviously a historical fiction. A lot of people loved it. This is an interesting cover. I love that it's pink just because there aren't a lot of like war historical fiction novels that are mostly pink. Like that's a little different. It's a little out there because again, it's, you know, it's a war story, but it's also a love story. So the pink really more applies to the romance aspect rather than uh, the World War II. And I think I would, I think that this is Aphrodite kind of holding the story. Just, and like we have the Eiffel Tower and the planes obviously in the clouds. I, I don't know. Like this is one of the covers that I don't mind. Like it's a nice looking cover. But okay, then what? It's interesting that it looks like she's holding almost the war in her hands because she is not the goddess of war, she was, you know, the goddess of romance and beauty, and so it, again, we associate the color pink, and so that works. See, my question is, if this is Aphrodite on the cover because she's holding the war, she's the one telling the story, I feel like we have the love interest up here, but then where is Hazel? But then if this is supposed to be Hazel, why is she, you know, like, I'm just a little confused. Like, I feel like this is Hazel, and then, what was his name, James? Yes. James 
And then there are just kind of some other people in the background, like you're really focusing on just one character when the book itself focuses on like four different characters. Again, unless this is Aphrodite, but then like what, is this just supposed to be the war in the background? I don't know. The shadowing is interesting, like it gives the book some dynamic and some depth to it, so I really enjoyed how there is shadowing to it. But I don't know, I'm also just not the biggest fan of realistic people on covers or photos taken. I think this is okay because it doesn't show an entire person's face, but it's really pretty cover and it makes sense for like a World War II story and a romance, but I think that there were some elements mostly up top here that could have been a little more thought out. I think that out of all of these, it sounded like The Nature of Witches was the one that was most representative to the contents inside while also being a really pretty cover. And the one that made the least amount of sense to me out of this list was Wilder Girls, and it just wasn't the prettiest cover. I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. If you have any books that you want me to judge the cover on, uh, whether or not I read them, I can either give a pre-reading judgment or a post-reading judgment, or I could do a little vlog where I make, where I look at the cover and give my ideas of the book, and then I read it, and then I actually talk about it at the end. So if that sounds interesting to you, comment down below and let me know. Leave me any suggestions. I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe because I post on every Sunday and Wednesday. And hit the bell so that you're notified so that when I do post on those days, you are made aware. Otherwise, I have a whole bunch of bookish social media linked down below. We can follow each other, become friends, talk about books, give each other recommendations. I would love to get connected with you guys. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.